And now, SiliconANGLE TV and Wikibon.org present a Focus Spotlight. Live from Las Vegas at VMworld 2011, host John Furrier and Dave Valente illuminating new models for cloud service providers with support from SolidFire. All right, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. We're live from VMworld 2011, SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we've got two great guests here. We're going to talk about uh, the cloud services business, how that's changing. I'm here with Nathan Day, who's the chief scientist, uh, and uh, Duke Scarta, who's the CTO of SoftLayer. Um, very interesting company. You want to hear more about it? Welcome, gentlemen. Yeah, thanks, Dave. So, Thank you. Um, start off, tell me a little bit about uh, SoftLayer, who you guys are, history of the company. Just take us through that. Sure. So SoftLayer is an infrastructure as a service company. We exist mainly to give our customers the ability to get um, our infrastructure in the terms of uh, cloud computing, regular computing, uh, network appliances, things of that. Trying to uh, deliver self-provisioned, self-managed compute solutions uh, that live in our data centers. Um, we, uh, we started in 2006 and uh, we've grown over the years. We've got data centers now in Dallas, Seattle, Washington DC, San Jose, and uh, we're actually about to open a data center in uh, Singapore and one in Amsterdam too. So are you, are you, are you, you compete with the big whale cloud service providers or Amazon or, uh, yes? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, we provide a little different service than you find uh, you know, from Amazon or Rackspace. Uh, we kind of we kind of fit in the middle of those two guys. Uh, you know, Amazon's great at the virtual machine infrastructure as a service. Rackspace is great at the managed, dedicated hosting. You know, we kind of fall in the middle where we have, uh, you know, the virtualized services, but we also the dedicated services as well, uh, in a self-managed environment. So we fit nicely between those two extremes. So you're a relatively new company. Um, what was the idea behind the company? What was the sort of secret sauce that you were trying to bring to the marketplace? Yeah, well, um, SoftLayer really began um, as, a, as an outgrowth of a, a number of people having a lot of experience in the hosting industry. Um, and the, the secret sauce that I would say that was really present from the beginning was automating everything and building on a generic platform. So all of our products and services are really based around an x86 platform. So we, we try to turn that into as many different products as we can. Um, from uh, network appliances, cloud appliances. So all of our dedicated servers and our cloud servers are really based on the same platform. If you go through our data center, it's you know rack after rack of x86 boxes um, that we can turn into just about anything. So um, what we're doing here at VMworld is we have these, in the afternoons, these uh, in-depth spotlights. And you guys, we bring you on as subject matter experts and uh, they're sponsored segments, uh, and, and we help our audience understand, practitioner audience understand, the topic, the trends, what's happening. And one of the things that we've talked about is every IT shop that you talk to, it's budgets are flat, we have to do more with less. Um, now, I'm guessing that your business is not flat. It's like up and to the right, right? right. Exactly, so We're, uh, we got great growth going on. Uh, we solve the, the problems you're addressing, uh, you know, basically turn compute into operational expense and capital expense for a lot of people. Uh, it's been going great. So, the point of the, that discussion is that um, what we see is the cloud service providers actually innovating, they're investing, they're growing faster than the average Joe uh, IT shop, the average Bear IT shop, and as a result, um, we think that the gap between you know, traditional IT and cloud service providers actually may be widening, um, but having said that, uh, traditional IT, they got different challenges, but they can learn a lot from cloud service providers. So, I want to go to school on you guys a little bit. What did you see, you know, when you started the company, and what do you see now as the cloud evolution? If I, if, if I can, everybody talks about the journey. What, what is sort of your journey and your vision that you see? Yeah, well, I'd say uh, when we first started the company, and really dating back to the to the early 2000s, um, service providers that were really hosting companies at the time really offered up a dedicated server. And it was, at the time, you know, very low level, a lot of web services, um, very sort of uh, simplistic applications on the internet. Over the last several years, um, a couple of things have really come together to make that a much more powerful platform. The internet itself is so much more robust over the last three years especially, you know, to the house, um, to our mobile platforms. We have internet access everywhere, and it's very powerful. You can get you know, 30 megabits right down to your house. Uh, we're all carrying 3G and 4G platforms around with us. That's made 
access to a centralized platform so much more ubiquitous that things like cloud have really come into their own. So one of the big changes that we've seen um, that's been brought about by that is the desire to have um, a, a cloud service. Um, and there's a couple of different ways you can look at cloud servers. Um, you know, Amazon has really popularized the virtualized cloud model. Um, we look at our dedicated model, and we think of that as having been cloud all along. Um, but now what we're trying to bring to the market is the ability to work with uh, dedicated servers in the way that we've all become accustomed to working with those virtualized servers as well. What does the infrastructure look like underneath? I mean, you guys, um I presume didn't have a ton of it, legacy infrastructure, right? a startup, so uh, what, what's it look like? Uh, we basically took an x86 server, wrote an automation orchestration engine around it, so we can take any x86 server, turn it into any product that in our catalog. And uh, one thing that made software different in the beginning was that we built out a dual network uh, for every server, which actually transitioned to every cloud virtual machine as well. That allows our customers to eliminate the problem reserving racks for growth, uh, because every server from SoftLayer is connected to each other via a private network as well as your traditional public facing network. And it gives our customers a lot of flexibility. They don't have to worry about cross connects. They can have servers in multiple data centers behind multiple routers and they still have that back end connectivity that really allows them to build a scalable application. So here at, at VMworld and I remember my first VMworld a few years ago, it hit me right in the face is storage is like the biggest problem that all these practitioners face. And, VMware's been working hard in the ecosystem, but um, where's storage fit in your, your challenge, pain in the neck pie? <laughs> it's pretty high up there. Uh, you know, whether you're talking about local attached, direct attached storage, and someone trying to do tricks with SSDs uh, to improve performance, putting in RAID cards, uh, going with a, uh, a memory model a la a Fusion I.O. Uh, so, you know, even on local server, server, there's still huge storage challenges. And then when you bring in the network attached storage, the SAN storage, uh, all kinds of new challenges present themselves. Uh, the, you know, workloads are different. Uh, the ability to fetch small objects, uh, it really, uh, it permeates every application out there because storage is turning into such a huge bottleneck, not only in terms of capacity, but also in terms of the actual performance. Are you able to, um to deliver c consistent quality of service uh, for your customers and actually charge for it? Uh, is storage a gate at doing that? Talk about that a little bit. Well, uh, at the storage layer, there's a couple of, uh, as Nathan just walked through, there's a bunch of different options. Each of those options has different levels of service that we can provide different quality of service. One of the things we're excited about with some of the new uh, products that are coming out now um, a lot of them based on SSD and flash, is they're sort of reinventing the way to, to build uh, a SAN platform. And one of the things that they're able to build in that we're very excited about is the ability to control at a fairly fine grain quality of service. Today, um, IOPS are really you know, mapped across all of the users of a given SAN. If we can begin to control that, then we can begin to charge for different levels of service, and more importantly, we can guarantee different levels of service for yeah, our customers. Yeah, so um, we've been looking into this. Our, our David Floyer, one of our analysts, has, has studied this market you know, very closely, and he's sort of laid out the different approaches. The, you know, the first one being sort of stack drives, let's say, in an right. EMC array, as sort of supporting legacy you know, systems. And then at the top of the, you know, the, the, the spectrum, if you will, you got Fusion I.O. server class memory. And we're starting to see these new uh, all flash arrays emerge. And, yeah. and the value proposition behind them is, is guaranteed quality of service. What we've done is analysis stacking up um, a hybrid, a hybrid uh, SAN array mm -hmm. with you know, spinning disk and flash with these all flash arrays. And we found that the all flash in a lot of applications is less expensive. Um, I'm trying to see if you, if you can confirm that. Um, are you seeing that potentially you can get greater utilization uh, out of these devices, um, or do you not have enough experience with that yet? I don't, I don't think we have enough experience yet. Um, right now, um, we like what we're hearing. Um, I think the, the models that we're hearing and the, the architectures that we're seeing look very promising. Uh -huh. uh, we're just now beginning to get our hands on these products, so we should know soon. We really, uh, this all these new products give us an opportunity to get another access to the product line. So instead of just talking about capacity, we can talk about selling a, a quality of service and guaranteeing performance at certain levels. That's really exciting. So, so how do you guarantee quality of service today? You just got to throw more hardware at the problem, is that right? Absolutely, you just got to put more hardware behind it. Spindles. And then you got to manage it. That's right. So that yeah. increases your cost. 
Will you be able to, uh, let's assume that you'll be able to sort of isolate quality of service you know, by customer, right? That's the nirvana, I presume, in your That's business. That's nirvana, right? yeah, that'd be great. Um, how do you charge? Do you charge cost plus today, or can you can you can you can you sell the value of that if you can? Uh, I, absolutely, I believe we can sell the value of that. The the other thing we um, you know would like to see is the ability to um, create very high performance cloud products as well. Um, you know, I'm there's sorry, high, performance. high performance cloud products. Oh yeah, okay. Um, you know, so there's the ability to sell sand storage as a service on top of our dedicated line, as well as blend it underneath. Uh, you know a, a a, a large number of cloud servers as well. So we can have multiple levels of cloud products as well. Okay, so, um, so let's sort of summarize what we talked about. I mean, you've got this cloud evolution going on. Yeah. Um, you've got Flash as this huge disruptor. Yeah. And if I understand it, you guys are looking at Flash as a way to actually generate incremental revenue and drive value for your customers uh, as, a, as well as potentially lower cost. Because right now, if I understand it, you're throwing hardware at the problem. Um, and I presume that ripples through to, to management as well? Mm -hmm. Management costs? Yeah, the ability to manage uh, you know, any storage environment is going to be critical to this. You're going to have to have the transparency to know what's going on inside the storage, and you're going to have to have the ability to uh, account for that so your application can perform at its best. Do you, do you feel like this will enable new applications? When we think of, you think of the cloud, you think of applications like backup and archiving, um, CRM, do you see uh, flash architectures supporting new levels of applications. Absolutely, uh, you know one of the one of the biggest problems that public clouds have is good storage access and and the ability to um, consistently supply the number of IOPS that our applications want that our clients are using. So if, if we can do that, we can drive the utilization up and the number of applications people can put in there really goes up. It opens up a lot of the a lot of opportunities. So what, give us an example. What kind of applications um, would you consider uh, emerging that you can't support that well and guarantee the quality of service for a cost effective approach um, that you will be able to enable in, in this new model? Um, I think any application that considers itself social, so any kind of social media, social gaming, uh, those guys have an application that really has to have rapid access to data and large quantities at the same time. And right now there's a lot of uh, gyrations going on, uh, memcache, all kinds of technologies used to kind of get around the problem, but if you can get reliable, fast storage, you can make the uh, problem a lot simpler for these guys. So if you had to if you had to put on your sort of telescope, look to the future, what would you guess would be your 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 breakout between you know spinning disk and 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 flash um, from a capacity standpoint? Is it ten percent flash? You know, five percent flash, fifty percent flash? What do you what do you what do you think? I think I think as far out as you go, that number the the number increases. Um, whenever we introduce a new flash product today, we can't keep it on the shelf long enough to sell, uh, to, to reach, meet demand. So, oh, um, you know, I think that will only be uh, uh, limited there by, the, by supply, I think. Excellent, all right, well listen, we're out of time. I appreciate you guys coming in and talking a little bit about SoftLayer. Thank you. Um, and sharing your perspectives. Good luck with the company. And uh, uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. All right, thank you. All thanks. Right, we'll see you guys later.